Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. And I thought I would do this as basically like a current event type video. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Uh, there's a big meta-analysis that came out this week. It's creating a lot of controversy, a lot of stir. There's a lot of blowback even in the scientific community. And it's basically stating that, look, red meat and even processed red meat. And I'm not going to necessarily promote people to eat processed red meat. Well, let's be realistic here. Even I'm going to be leery on that one. That needs to be moderated. Uh, doesn't seem to have the health risk generally that people believe it does. And I think we need some context for a lot of this. We need context for a lot of this. Um, and people have to remember that there is politics and social policy involved with a lot of dietary guidelines. And I don't want to turn this channel into a political channel. I'm not going to. Uh, it's not part of what I want to do in the direction of this. But just be aware that there are politics involved. Um, and, and I may not even agree with a lot of it. I might disagree with a lot of it. I do. And so that, a lot of that influences dietary guidelines. Right? There, again, there's grant money involved in that. There's policy shifts based upon everything from social views to environmentalism and everything else. Right? But that's not the context of what most of us should be considering with our food choices. And here's what I would point out. My channel are generally lifters. My target audience are not sedentary, obese people who have no interest in getting into shape. Okay, That's not my target audience. I don't care what the data says for those people. Those people are choosing death. So we, should, we have to stop worrying about epidemiology for people who intentionally choose a terrible lifestyle. They're choosing to be unhealthy and die young. We shouldn't care what the data says for their nutrition, right? So perspective, let's step away from that. These guidelines are generally showing the risks aren't as prevalent as they think. And we look at the other thing that it came out over a year ago that upset a lot of people, and it said the overall guidelines seem to be when we take the total correlation and a lot of people misinterpret that. When you state that, I've even had people come in and, and, and try to argue against it. Say, oh, that doesn't mean that meat and dairy are good. It's like, well, compared to other foods, they are. Okay, and that's where we need the context. We had this one that showed that people who generally get more calories total from the food groups, vegetables, fruits, meat, dairy, nuts, those five food groups have the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease. Now, people get upset at that and say, well, you can't promote that. Well, that's what the data showed. Do you know why? Because a lot of people who also work out and are healthy eat a lot of meat and dairy. Okay, These are not the foods that cause the cardiovascular disease by themselves. And if that's the only five things, let's go over to that point. When I see data like that, that doesn't tell me, oh, you should just eat more of those and just combine it with your other junk. That tells me that the data shows that people that basically stick to those five food groups probably do have the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease. And it's not because dairy and meat cure it. It's that by themselves or when combined with those foods, they don't particularly seem to cause it. They're not the cause. They might be cofactors in the wrong environment. And I think that's, that's the take home. So let's come back over to this stuff about the red meat. People freak out about it. Well, I don't think that they're the cause. And here's what I've seen. The majority of people who are fit and athletic who consume copious, very large amounts of red meat, if their other lifestyle factors are on point, they don't seem to even have bad blood work. Let's even do that with, with the, the keto diet. The most extreme diets generally involving saturated fat. We see the same thing with the cardiovascular risk. Are the people who do their diet off of those foods, do they have the bad blood markers? No. They don't. Who has bad lipids who does a ketogenic diet? Because let's look at it. Let's not just say, well, we don't need to just look at trends of what we see in a study. Let's look at what we see with every person's blood work with medical doctors who look at them. Let's look at the people's blood work who we know personally, because we know people, I'm in fitness world, I know tons of people with different diets, I keep up with this. Consistently, who are the only people who you see bad blood work on who do keto diets? 
people who had butter and coconut oil. Okay, to come back over, people who had a bunch of refined fats back into their diet are the people who see the elevated LDL every single time. It's trendy to do that. The problem isn't the red meat they're eating. The problem isn't the, the full fat dairy. It's when they literally add refined saturated fats back into their diet. The butter is basically a pretty refined fat. We've now isolated it and all this stuff with it. There's your issue. We don't see it from the people who are eating steak and eggs and vegetables. Those people don't, don't see those issues. Let's come over to the other point. Where are our concerns generally with, with red meat? It seems to be because of the, the possible caloric density and in a really high calorie diet. People who eat in a caloric surplus, who consume certain foods in combination, this is where we see the problems. It's not those foods themselves that are the real cause. And that's what we need to be looking at here. People are screaming and crying over stuff like red meat. Realistically, that should be so far down our list of concerns right now. And it's stupid vegans and it's other people who want to push that stuff that this is our problem. Is that really what's making people fat and sick? I mean, realistically. Because people who eat, eat a meat and potatoes diet who are physically active and work out on the farm tend to still be in pretty good health into their old age, historically. That's not the problem. How about the problem is that people eat tons of refined foods? I mean, we, we want to have all this push and arguments over stuff like this while people are sitting around drinking liters of soda full of refined sugars. While people are dumping vegetable oils Refined vegetable oils and butter and everything else into everything they eat. Okay, there's your problem. Refined fats, refined carbs, refined sugar, hyper palatable, calorically dense, low nutrient density foods. All right, there is your elephant in the living room. All right, when people are eating stuff like this and calling it food, and this includes you, the if it fits your macros people telling people, oh, you can eat pop tarts and pancakes and ice cream every day in this amount, it's like, look, you're not helping. All right, all of this stuff, this highly refined garbage, there is the big elephant in the living room. All right, this is where our health problems are coming from. This is what we need to be focused on. Because realistically speaking, you take the average American who's obese, and even if you put them on a diet that consists of nothing but some of these other foods, let's say you go back over to the other thing, and, and notice I didn't include grains, because grains aren't even panning out to be that well in a lot of the research these days. They've been overhyped. Whole grains have been overhyped. They've been way overhyped. You put someone on a diet, and I don't care what version you want to do. I don't care whether it's a paleo type or a keto type or whatever macro breakdown you want to do. Okay, set that to the side for a moment. If you get people training vigorously, you get people doing heavy resistance training, you have them doing metabolic conditioning, and you push them in the direction of just disregarding refined foods. Don't eat refined foods. Don't eat junk. Toss it to the side. You don't need it. And you go back over to those five things, fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy, nuts. Okay, and we can count root vegetables in there, potatoes and carrots. We can count as vegetables in that context. If your diet is based around those things and you don't eat anything else other than those five broad categories, and that can include red meat, that can include whole milk. And let's say that butter would count as a refined food. Let's push that butter and the heavy cream aside, okay? Let's stick with these others. Same thing. People say, well, I love my yogurt. Well, is your yogurt loaded full of a bunch of crap or is it just yogurt? Is it, is it dairy and a culture? Or is it high fructose corn syrup and berry flavored juice extract and all this stuff in it? Okay. There's your problem. That doesn't work. Let's come back over. These five food groups. You eat those five things. And whatever combination you see fit without avoiding the vegetables, because that doesn't work either. And you get people doing resistance training, metabolic conditioning. What happens to all these health concerns? All of this argument and all these things we talk about, they go away, they become statistical anomalies. 
Our problem is being sedentary, being out of shape, and eating refined foods. All right, that is our health crisis. It's focused upon by, by goofy vegans and other people. Oh, the red meat's the problem. The milk is the problem. It's like, no, you're, you're the problem. By making people focus on that instead of the real issues, you're making the problem worse. All right, here, here's our solution. This is our cure for cancer. This is our cure for cardiovascular disease. This is our cure for type 2 diabetes. This is our cure. These things become statistically very, very, very low in that context. They're still going to exist because they have always existed in nature. But the rates are going to plummet in that context. That's what we need to push. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.